Hey everyone, I'm at Whiskey Abbey, a celebration of whiskey. So we have inside right now some of the best in Australian whiskey paired along with some of the industry leaders. So I've already been inside and I've been on a little bit of a journey that I'm going to share with you. So without further ado, we're going to grab our glass and we are going to raise it to the whiskey gods. Come on a journey with me. Cheers. So guys, this is uh, Old Temper Distillery, and this is the old stable, so batch six, actually won World Whiskey Awards Best Small Batch in Australia. It's actually got a bit of a bourbon cask in there, a bit of a sherry cask, a bit of port from Sepplesfield in South Australia, and uh, it's absolutely delicious. So, give you a go. This will be my first uh, Josh, try it gets of the heavy day. Pour. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. So you, you, you're on camera, so you get away with the three grand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I love the color of that too. Actually owned uh, by a convict who got done for embezzlement. Um, supposed to be. It was supposed to be. So it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a few thousand pounds, but he ended up being caught for six shillings. And right, then when he somebody with and the then whiskey. when he and then when he left, he married an aristocratic woman, and they built this and ended up living the freaking life out in Kempton, man. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh. Is Bush Mills was especially whiskey not whiskey. wanted back then. Right. And so essentially what would happen with Scotch whiskey and also with Irish whiskey is they would bottle exclusive for markets when the markets order them. So in this case, this is bottled exclusively for Australia. We, wow. we can tell that because it's a 750 ml bottle right. and it's not in America. And the 700s came into effect in 1985. So we know it's pre-85 and most likely 1982 due to labels on the glass manufacture. So the main difference that we're seeing with the Bushmills here is a predominance of sherry cask in the blend. So a very exceptional example of Bushmills before it uh, was mass produced in the same way. So the first one we released was the sherry, the second was the bourbon, the third, and then we've also got the fourth, which is the terrazia. So they're all absolutely beautiful. These two are a mix of 100 and 200 litre. Um, this one's a first build bourbon cast. This one's a first build um, exapera cast, and this is a 100 litre first build exapera cast. What's your favourite? Out of these three, definitely the sherry. Sherry, all right. Yeah. I love that full body richness, like, come at me. Yeah, I'd love to try that one if that's what it is. You'll have to stay for a second because I think the other one is. Do you think so? Cheers, mate. That richness, that roundness, the smooth. For me in the Italian series, it's definitely the Montepulciano. So these three over here, the Italian explains it a lot better than I because he is Italian, obviously. That's why I've got a job. But it's a collaboration. I've got to get fired as soon as we finish with it. Thanks God, the, the next series is going to be my bet. Maybe yeah. like the more Spanish stuff. Anyway. So the story behind, in 2018, we did a collaboration with Mino & Co. Mino & Co is a winemaker based in Griffith, New South Wales. Like a big part of the Griffith population, this guy has Italian background. That's why he's growing Italian grape varieties. So we got some cars from him 
and with these three casts we did these three different single cut cask expression. Sangiovese, Ayanico and Montepulciano. We've been the first one in Australia and probably in the world to try to, to let's say, experiment and age whiskey in Sangiovese, Ayanico and Montepulciano. So I've tried a Sangiovese gin. What? The gin and the whiskey, they express the liquid in, in a different way. So have you tried it? Sour? It? No. <laughs> there is a, actually for me it's a good com uh, good connection between uh, what you can expect from a Sangiovese wine and uh, the Sangiovese cask whiskey in terms of when you're thinking about Sangiovese wine you're thinking about something floral definitely a uh, good spice tannins and fruit in a different way the whiskey but floral on the nose a lot of lavender a beautiful bouquet and then definitely grey spice, stone fruit, red fruit and gentle sweet tannins on the back part as well. 51.7% uh, of it me, so it's a quite a big boy. Uh, cast strength will be 62.2 but we did a, a, a little breakdown with water to express better uh, the bouquet and the spice as well. Amazing, thank you. Uh, let's give this one a try then. Uh, we filled up this cask in November 2018. It was the 3rd of November, 5th of November and 11th of November. So the only difference between the three is the cask. Same new made spirits, everything is the same. It's like really, uh, like, like, has like a great... Oh yeah, so it does. Yeah. But, uh, to be also so strong in alcohol and so young, it's, it's still really approachable and smooth and easy to drink. Very smooth. Really approachable. Just uh, the mouthfeel is like super like, it opens up my taste buds like straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be the boost. But it's... <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the boost. And this one that we're tasting is the... The Montepulciano cask. Totally different from the, from the, uh, from the Sangiovese cask. Multiple channel, it's more like a, a beautiful breakfast whiskey. It's a beautiful combination of boysberries, blackberries combined with sweet milk, chocolate or white chocolate notes, but with dry, clean, clean tannins on the back palate. Slightly lower in every bit, 51.7%, but it expressed better all the sweetness and it's more round, bold, mild. Uh, great, great single more whiskey. Thank you. All right, let's give this a, this one a try as well. It needs to be, whether it's 60 bucks or $6,000. It needs to be good. Good? No, no, before that, before it's oh, good. it's good. Oh, I don't know. I don't have your answer. First, first thing a whiskey needs to then be. Then I afford it. it no, 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 before, before it's it whiskey. Before the, no, 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 come on. No, let's it tastes like whiskey. What is, what is whiskey first? It needs to be fun. See you later, it brother. It needs to be fun. Oh Every God, bottle you, of whiskey needs to be exactly fun. what we were saying. That's you you fun. worry we're about taste fun. and alcohol level and all that sort of stuff after. Whiskey is a social drink. Yeah. It enhances conversation yeah. and it promotes yeah. nuance. You're so right. right. You're so right. We need to remember that this that is, is so fun. important. This so is this fun. is our green sack. So we've been sitting around the backyard, right, at the barbie. And Uncle Craig likes a whiskey, but he drinks it out of a mug with Dr. Pepper. Great. OG is going to keep him happy every time. Uh, the sun goes down, the mozzies come out, true. we go inside. This is where Green Sash comes out. So this is Net OG, which you've tried just before. Turned up a little bit, so 44%. We're looking for barrels that show a real structural color of caramel, right? That's where we earmark yeah, yeah. them early in the journey. Every barrel gets tried twice before it turns 18 months old. Ah, uh, reserve grade means it can be across the flavor spectrum of probably grade, but it's just really, really good. It has a so, lovely color to it. Yeah, no, no other color. This is all the more. It's so true. You're going to get us. Hey guys, cheers. 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 Salute. Is, salute. And while I love expensive whiskey and I've spent way too much money on whiskey, whiskey in my life, but it has to be fun. You need fun. that whiskey that it's, we can just. There's, there's nothing more than regret. Exactly. Your no, yeast has regret such an interesting spend, smell. Yeah, yeah. When you spend 200 bucks on a bottle of whiskey, you're like, it smells the same as something else. So if you were here today, if you were here today, you are not the top 5%, you're not the top 1%, you are the 0.1% of whiskey drinkers in Australia, which means in your group of friends, you're the person with the whiskey collection. So we get out, we, we, we go, you know, day drinking out at the pub, and we all rock back to your, 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 your house yeah, exactly. because you've got the whiskey collection. But you get you get home and you've got 20 whiskeys at home and you go to the back of the cup and you go, yeah. I, don't, oh, that obvious. I don't like those assholes enough to crack the $200 exactly. bottle yeah. open. They're not worth it. Welcome They're to Ned's. That's us with our this is us like, because yeah, I'll make like, and mix it with Dr. Pepper, Pepper Kool-Aid, whatever he wants to do. Yeah. And you can replace it tomorrow for 55 bucks again. Guilt-free so right. Australian drinking. So right. That's why before I was with Ned, 
My favourite Australian whisky was Snow and Twofold. I love that Snow and Twofold. That, that I love Archie really Roach's good. double malt. Slightly too expensive. They need to bring it down a bit. That I understand why it is. But we need to be united front. Australian whisky. Many range here. We've got the 12 year old sweet toast of American oak. Beautiful whiskey finished in virgin American oak. Specially toasted. Uh, incredible. It's gone down pretty well, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few more. These are brand new from the Bavini as well. Our new French oak. Just finished in French oak Pinot de Charant barrels. Only released in Australia the last couple of months. So it's been another really popular one this weekend. And then this one, brand new. 19 years aged in Spanish oak, ex Oloroso sherry barrels. This is an absolutely incredible whiskey. Dark chocolate, summer fruits. It's like a black forest gato in a glass, basically. Yeah, it's done really well, actually. You, what, you need to try one. Yeah, I was going to say, what would be your favorite to try, or what would you recommend? From the Balvenie range right now, it's, uh, it's probably the French oak. I, I just, I love this whiskey, it's gone down so well. So they're really floral, honey, lemon. I would say try this one first. But you need to try the 19 afterwards. You have to try both of them, really. And was there any, like, uh, so which is Balvenie? How long has Balvenie been uh, distilling? So we built a distillery in 1892. Uh, we've been going ever since then. We actually still make our whiskey very traditional way. So we use the same five crafts of crafts of when we made our whiskey at the beginning. So we grow our barley on site, we malt our barley on site, we have our own coppersmith that looks after our copper pot stills to be distilling. We've got our own cooperage, we've got 20 full-time coopers building the barrels that we make our whiskey in. We usually say about 70% of the flavour of any whiskey comes from the barrel. So we're really looking after those barrels. So an incredible craft we're looking after. Them. And the last craft, the craft of the malt master. So we have just changed hands for our malt master from David Stewart here. Uh, 60 years he's been making whiskey with us. So David Stewart, MBE, he's just passed over the reins to Kelsey McKechnie, our new malt master. This is the first whiskey just with her name on it. So a very special bottle and it's her first whiskey. Is Kelsey it's all her. Uh, a woman? Or? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so she's taken over as malt master from David. I've heard that women actually have a better palate. That is apparently true, yeah, and sense of smell as well. That's apparently true. But Kelsey's been with us for uh, over 10 years now, I think it is. She's worked her way through the ranks. She's incredible at what she does. And she's been apprenticed for the last five years. Learning from David and Brian Kinsman, our malt master, Glenn Fiddick. Now she's taking the reins on Balveni. So this is very exciting to see her, her first whiskey come out. So yeah, it's very exciting. I'd love to try the 16th first whiskey. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get a little taste. Yeah. Very amber, isn't it? Yeah, it's got this beautiful, like, kind of reddish, slightly reddish hue. So it's finished in Pinot de Chiron barrels which is a fortified French wine, it's a red fortified wine. So it gets a little bit of hint of the flavor from the Pinot de Chiron. Just that slight reddish color there. It's yeah, beautifully fruity. floral, honey, fruity, lemon. That's a, yeah, cracking little whiskey. Yeah. So this is our brand new Balvenie revelation of cask and character. This is 19 years, fully matured in Spanish oak, X Oloroso sherry barrels. And Spanish oak, X Oloroso sherry, it's really about this like raisin sultana, dried fruit, spice, dark chocolate. See that beautiful ruby red color. Are the barrels hard to come by? They're, they're hard to come by, they're expensive. So if you look at uh, American oak X bourbon barrels, between like 60 and 90 pounds a barrel. These can be about 1,000, 1,200 pounds a barrel. So these get up there, but they're they're harder to make, but that's just in Jerez a couple of months ago. Looking at where we get our barrels from, we use two cooperages in Spain and Jerez. And the amount of work and time that goes into each one of those barrels, that's why it tastes so good in the end. The wood's looked after, it's matured in the right way, it's built into the barrels and coopered into these barrels in the perfect way that draws the flavour out for our whiskey. We get sent over to Scotland, 
We're aging it for 19 years in those barrels. It gets all that beautiful color, all that flavor. I, I, I can't get enough yeah, of this whiskey. Absolutely. It's so beautiful. Let me have a try. It's so incredible. We were just having a chat actually and just talking about the fact that uh, this whiskey it's just a whiskey that pairs so perfectly with your chattery boards, your cheeses, yeah. your salamis, like... You get this one, like, oh, when you're pairing with cured meats, you get that saltiness of the meat and the sweetness of the whiskey really balances out. This one with, like, a really creamy blue cheese, that, that's, that's where you want it. <laughs> I smell that. It's actually making my mouth water <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> This one is a Glyphitic Grand Cru 23 year old. This is maybe my favourite Glyphitic. I, I don't know, I like a lot of them, but this is maybe my favourite. Apart from all the story, the beautiful bags and everything, this is one of the most delicious whiskey I've ever had, personally. This is 23 years old, finished in French Cuvée wine barrels. Uh, it's it got this beautiful lemon brioche sweetness. I always think. You know those little lemon bonbon sweets you get, like coffee wrapped in like kind of lemony yellow powder? I think it smells and tastes like one of those. After 23 years, that's when we put it into the French cuvee wine barrels. We get them sent over from France to Scotland. Uh, it rests in there for about six months, roughly. It's a little bit of the influence of that French cuvee. It's got like kind of brioche, pastry, citrus, a bit of toffee. It's really bright and sweet. Really soft around the edges. Yeah. Let's give it a try. Uh, so, it yeah, have a little taste. Uh, stags have horns for a reason, so let's <laughs> give this one a crack. Oh, wow. So I've heard great things about this. Last dram of the day. 26 year old Glenfiddich Grand Curon. This one, after 24 years, we finish it in some very old cognac barrels in France. And it's finished in there for two years. Really interesting thing with this one is that for the first few months it's in the cognac barrel. It gets a real quite big influence from the cognac that was in there before. But the other maybe year and a half that it's in there, because they're very old cognac barrels, it actually gets quite little influence in the barrel. It just gets time to settle down and soften around the edges. So this one's got some really big flavour, but it's very delicate at the same time. It's almost like they say like Central Otago Pinot Noir is an iron fist in a velvet glove. It's kind of what this is like. It's big, it's bold, but it's also quite delicate. The box that it comes in is like amazing too. <laughs> Hang on, you gotta see the whole thing. Hang on. <laughs> wow. And this is a... That's a, one for the shelves. It's a genuine painting from the Baroque period an Austrian painter called Johann Platz. <laughs> it's incredible. It's amazing. It is beautiful. It's absolutely amazing. But the whiskey tastes good. That's the main thing. Comes yes. down the liquid, comes down the whiskey. It Look, tastes I, great. I'm a fashion guy and like I like things that stand out, so <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. This it, is not one that I would uh, have at a house party the, though. The looks <laughs> matter, but it's all about the substance of what's inside the bottle for us. That's so yellow as well, wow. Yeah, beautiful, bright golden colour. Alright, down the hatch. There you go. I see you next year on a bigger and better event. Thank you. So as you can see, the Australian whiskey culture is thriving. We've just had the most amazing experience inside of Whiskey Abbey. I just think that this is such a sensational event to showcase Australian whiskies paired with some of the best in the world in an amazing space. Kind of gave me reminiscent to a to a hardcore show. There were moments, you know, where there's people running around pouring drinks. It's like a mosh pit in a way, but it was exciting, it was invigorating, and I just can't wait to see what the future of Australian whiskey has and i'm just so grateful to be able to attend an event like this so whiskey abbey will be on next year you've got to come by you've got to check it out in out convid it's what we do cheers